So this is the question. It asks the radiant energy from the sun reaches its maximum at a wavelength of about uh, this value. What is the approximate temperature of the sun's surface? So what they are getting at is um, it's black body radiation. If you look at the hint, it refers to black body radiation and yeah, Vince the displacement. <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. And just to prove that I know Vince the displacement law. What Vince the displacement law says is that it says this is a constant, the product of the wavelength at which maximum radiation occurs over a black body times the temperature of the black body in the Kelvin unit is a constant. So what I need to look up is I need to know what the constant is. So it's one of those physical constants that I don't have memorized and I will never have memorized because it's not worth memorizing. <laughs> so let me look in the textbook what that constant is because it will tell me. Um, so the constant for that is, ah, there it is. 2.898 times 10 to the minus 3 meter times Kelvin. So I have it in nanometers. Let me convert it to meters as I plug in the number. And since we are solving for temperature, I needed this number divided by the wavelength given. So the number 2.898 times 10 to the power of minus 3. You need to divide by the its wavelength. So 510 nanometers to convert it to meters, I do uh, times 10 to the power of minus 9. So yeah, that should give me the answer in kelvins. 5682 kelvins. It's a pretty simple question. Um, not difficult. Just you know, need to know Finn's displacement law and know where to look up this constant to plug in. Um, I don't know if there's a name for the constant. It's not like Stefan Boltzmann law. It is related to Stefan Boltzmann law, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so wait, is it related to Stefan Boltzmann law? It's related, but I'm not sure if you can derive it from Stefan Boltzmann law. Um, in any case, let me go to the next question. Okay, so it looks like this is a photoelectric effect question. It says the work function, that's where I get, oh, it's photoelectric effect. For potassium is this much. What is the cutoff of frequency when this metal is used as a photoelectrode? Okay, so, um, so let me just write, jot down some things as a reminder for me. So in photoelectric effect, the kind of discovery or the bold assumption of Einstein was that he was treating light as a particle. So as the um, if this is my metal surface, as light comes in and hits it and electrons get ejected out, uh, what he was, uh, uh, how he was describing this interaction is an exchange of energy. So the amount of energy of the photon, that's your input energy. Some of that energy goes into freeing the electron and uh, whatever uh, is over and above that amount goes into the kinetic energy of the electron. So you would say, okay, the energy of the instant photon is equal to the amount of work function that you need to, amount of energy you need to put in to free the electron plus its kinetic energy. And the energy of the photon would be uh, following Planck's uh, previous assumption Planck constant times the frequency of the, the electromagnetic wave. So where it talks about cutoff frequency is the frequency of the light at which your kinetic energy goes to zero. So for cutoff frequency, you can say that uh, Planck constant times the cutoff frequency is the work function. So. Uh, yeah, so I think I can just solve this for the cutoff frequency or what they call F0. And that will get me F0 is equal to phi divided by H O. Um, so Planck's constant is one of those constants that I never have memorized. <laughs> it's not to any degree of precision. So let me look it up. I think that is in section 6.1. So let me just scroll down and program it into the, um, the Sage Math thing that I have as my calculator. Okay, there it is. And I want to use Planck's constant in electron volt units. That's always going to kind of simplify my life 
when all my energies are specified in electron volts. So my Planck's constant, its numerical value is 4.136 times 10 to the power of minus 15 in the electron volt unit. So we did that value uh, given my work function of 2.26. My uh, cutoff frequency would be that divided by the Planck's constant that I just programmed. It. So um, tera uh, hertz. I gotta remember this. <laughs> so. Uh, you can also look it up in the textbook if you have forgotten it. So gigahertz is uh, 10 to the 9 hertz. So I think a terahertz is uh, 10 to the 12 hertz. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. So what I should do is, so this is in the unit of hertz. To convert it from hertz to terahertz, I uh, will divide by. Uh, 10 to the power of uh, 12. Um, or another way to say it is in one terahertz, there's 10 to the 12 hertz. So I'm dividing that out to get an answer in the unit of terahertz, uh, 546. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Uh, so when they specify higher frequency, then uh, you are well above the cutoff frequency. So you are, um, so let me erase some of the stuff that no longer applies. So if you are well off the cutoff frequency, now your uh, electron that's being ejected will have some kinetic energy. So in terms of uh, expressing the stopping voltage, you are imagining having set up this kind of a structure. So this is a metal, you have another metal, and you put in some kind of voltage difference between them. So for the electron to be able to reach the other metal, assuming you put you know, some sort of opposing voltage so that electron slows down as it gets there, uh, what needs to be true is that the kinetic energy that it starts with has to be greater than the amount of potential energy it needs to overcome, the elementary charge times delta V. So in the threshold case or in the stopping voltage case, you would say, oh, that's where your uh, inequality becomes equality. The kinetic energy starting with is the elementary charge times the stopping voltage. So, um, so I think uh, I can come up with an expression for kinetic energy from here. So let me just declare some of the variables. I have kinetic energy. Um, H, oh wait, I already have H, I have frequency, I have um, V. So um, in terms of these variables, I have to say my kinetic energy is equal to the H times frequency of the instant light minus the work function V. Okay, that makes sense. And given the kinetic energy, my stopping voltage, uh, so let me declare the uh, V stop, would it be, uh, wait, I didn't have to declare that. Oh, let me declare the elementary charge. Um, then my stopping voltage is equal to the kinetic energy divided by elementary charge. Good, I, that makes me feel okay. Yeah, so let me plug in all the numbers. I have Planck's constant in already. Let me substitute in. My frequency is 1, 2, oh, 4 times 10 to the power of um, 12 uh, for terahertz. And my work function is uh, 2.26 electron volt. I'm keeping everything in electron volt units. Uh, elementary charge. Here's the wonderful thing. When you are working with electron volts, you actually don't have to plug in any value for elementary charge. You can say my elementary charge is, um, so this is what I can say. I can say that my uh, elementary charge is really 1E, where this E is the same symbol that's in electron volts. So E kind of just cancels out and you get volts. So I'm just going to say my elementary charge in the unit we are using is 1, 1E. And I'm just going to rely on that E to cancel out um, in the algebra. So with that, I get 2.72 volts. This, this sounds reasonable. Uh, that's kind of the typical voltages you get when you do photoelectric effect uh, with uh, some reasonable stuff.
that's it. Uh, pretty easy, not that difficult.